Today, Tim and I will present stage two of Glowry Catholic Primary School, a suburban school planned for three streams and 525 students. We started work um, after stage one was completed by others. We won a competition in 2018 to work on stage two. As part of the process, we worked with the client to update their master plan for the site. The school is designed around a few major conceptual ideas that are based on the identity of the school, its context, its climate, and our best ideas on how to plan a great primary school. The school is located in a growth area of Wallet, 23 kilometres to the north of the city. The site is characterised by roads to the south and east. The main entrance is to the south. There is a park to the north and a main road and retail to the west. We have some ancient eucalypts that define the northwest corner, which also start to put parameters around where the school buildings could go. We designed stage two and three into the northeast corner and maximized play areas to the center of the school. We reorientated the master plan entrance so the site had a student entrance direct off the drop off area with a new covered linear walkway that created a um, new whole of site connector and threshold to the north side of the stage one building and a lead into the school. Stage two has nine classrooms and art room and all configured around a central collaborative zone. The collaborative area provides an opportunity for each classroom, a space to expand into. It also offers different joinery options than is available in the direct learning environment for different configurations of students and teachers. This is crucial to today's teaching methods. The collaborative space is what links the building together into a cohesive environment. The building is broken into two zones. The threshold between the zones is a special space called the cave, which is a strong, distinct personality and provides a space that is different from the classroom and the collaborative zone. The project space brings creativity and making into the learning centre. There is large amounts of glass used to bring visibility and awareness it helps promote the idea of participation of the students with the whole learning and center outside of their classroom. From an ESD perspective, we were thorough with the basics, shading the building walls with large eaves and massively over insulating the roof to stop heat gain at the roof and reduce energy consumption on heating and cooling. We also sealed the building up to reduce leakage. The whiteness of the building helps reflect the sun and importantly, we provided fresh air mechanically to keep the students stay alert and healthy. The simple form and structure allowed for a cost-effective solution that also provides less possible maintenance problems in the future. Tender result was excellent. We were under our expected budget and were able to build significant sport and play spaces with the gain. Mary Glowry, for whom the school is named after, was a pioneer. She graduated from medicine in 1910 from Melbourne University and went on to move to India at the age of 33 in 1920 to care for women and children who would otherwise not receive care. She never returned to Victoria. We also collaborated with the sculptor Jenny Steiner who created artwork in the building and the entrance to emphasize, <laughs> to elaborate on Mary Glary's life and the school's identity. The site is typical of the remnant grasslands and agricultural plains to the north of Melbourne, hot, dry and exposed. From our first site visit, it was clear that the architecture will need to provide the children with shaded and protected gathering and play spaces. Reference was made to the traditional owner's understanding of the seasons, where a late summer of heat, humidity and grassland drying continues through March. Just as Mary Glary's hooded habit shielded her from the Indian climate, we drew on ideas of shade, protection and veil for the architecture. Sun angles were calculated for the March equinox. Firstly, to allow for a fully shaded sitting and gathering area along the northern wall at lunchtime. And secondly, for the prevention of direct sunlight intrusion from the west until after the school day. The resultant angles or slices skewed the Skillion roof plane to the northwest, away from the orthogonal figuration underneath, creating these gathering zones. The white roof reflects solar gain whilst alluding to a nun's habit. With the high point at the northwest corner, the architecture creates an enclosure for the play spaces. Acts as a visible marker of the school from the main road and a backdrop for the landscape. 
With a deference to the vernacular forms of Australian agricultural buildings, the simple skilling then falls towards the west, terminating at, a, terminating at a height and scale appropriate for the suburban context. Yeah, let's go on. A covered way from the school gate creates a cloistered southern boundary, unifying the school's buildings, whilst the roof line folds down and inwards to mark the entry. The veil filters and screens the loggia and gathering spaces. The interplay of light and shadow animates the passing of the day. Three large wood clerestory windows run counter to the fall of the skillion, defining the silhouette and illuminating the deep plan. The, fat, the flat ceiling datum with fully glazed walls creates spatial and vi visual connectivity across the facility. The breakout spaces are flooded with light from the clerestory windows. The lower datum unifies the door heads and glazing transoms to inscribe the boundaries of the breakout. Transparency across the centre promotes a strong learning culture and community. At the heart of the plan is the cave, an enclosed area for focus group work that provides a threshold and a change of landscape through the learning spaces. To round out the presentation, we have some images from the interior. This is a photo of a typical classroom, the ceiling height at a consistent ceiling height across the building is 2.9 metres and to the learning centre except in the project space to further promote the connection to the collaborative space from each classroom. Transparency from the classroom to the collaborative space was important. Also the large sliding doors allowed the classrooms to open up to the collaborative space and extend the, the area of, of, of use. Project spaces were careful to provide bigger working spaces for the students and their projects. The cave and mini cave we were detailed focused with. The tessellated facets were constructed from hardboard lined with pinboard and the geometry was highlighted with the linear LED lighting. The cave has a bold, vibrant colour compared to the soft tones of the rest of the building. One minute. This is an image of the mini cave. And this is an image of the big roof eave protection. If we technical problem here. <laughs> um, thank you for taking the time to consider our project for this award. That's the end of our presentation.